Hello, my name is Greg Branham, owner of Branham Equipment Sales and Exports, Inc. We are a used semi-trailer dealer in Markle, Indiana. We sell all types of trailers, primarily refrigerated trailers. Here behind me is a used 2005 refrigerated trailer that we're getting prepped for resale. One of the issues we ran into when we're reconditioning trailers for resale is a lot of times the wear band will be pulled away from the interior wall. The fix for this was uh, inadequate to say the least and we designed a new system uh, in order to help our customers uh, keep their integrity of their trailer longer. What I'm holding here is a cutaway version of the sidewall of a refrigerated trailer. As you see, we got our outer aluminum skin, we have our interior insulation, lining, wear band, and our sidewall posts. Now, the problem we're fixing today is where the wear band would be damaged and pulled away from the wall. And the old way of fixing this, as you see here, was using a stainless steel sheet metal style screw with a pan head. Now there's issues with this, this system. Couple things, first off, the pan head extrudes from the wear band, which would allow product to hit it, pull it, damage it, break it, so on and so forth. Then as you see, where it comes to the post, the post is relatively thin, which does not allow for much gripping strength on the post. Also, by drilling into the post, you're, you're drilling holes that were not intended to be there, and it compromises the integrity of the post itself. Now this system is the way that many shops fix it today. However, it's not a long-term fix. It normally always pulls back out, and when it does so, it'll pull holes through the post, bend it, break it, crack it, and then you just have to push the wear band back and redrill new holes. It's not a very good system. What we came up with is using a quarter by 20 stainless steel screw with a Phillips style head. Now this head is rounded, so once it's installed on the trailer, it, for the most part, mimics the factory installed solid rivets. So the look is, 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 there's a lot of continuity between the looks. And then with the stainless steel, you do not get any cavitation, corrosion, or rust on the exterior. On the interior, use a brad hole T-nut, and the nice thing about this product, it gives us a three-quarter inch grip on the inside. For the most part, it's flush with the wear band, which will allow product to skim over the top of it and it has a 5 16 dip depth thread, so it gives us a lot more gripping strength on the quarter by 20 stainless steel screw. Now the tools we use for this process are pretty standard and are in most mechanics toolboxes. First thing, two load locks. Tape measure. Hammer with the center punch. A drill, two drill bits, one's a 5 16 and one's a quarter inch, a pair of snap ring pliers, and a ratchet with the proper uh, Phillips style head. And then to finish it off, you'll need the grinder to cut off the excess bolt. Now on this trailer, here's an example of where the wear band is separated from the sidewall. From the cam camera angle, it's kind of hard to see from a distance the damaged area. It's roughly a, a eight foot section of the wear band that's pulled away. But with the square, you can get a visual. And as you see here, from the top of the wear band to where it's connected to the floor plank, there's approximately a three inch gap. Now we're going to show you today how our product pulls this wear band back in place and uh, will hold it permanently. Step one is to measure from the rear door post to the damaged area. You want to, 
from a ground up, get a measurement to this upper wear band section. Here you see the rivet that we've marked. We've taken the two measurements from earlier and located the center of the damaged area on the outside of the trailer. This is where we'll make our first drill hole. Now on the inside of the trailer, we have marked the exact spot where the rivet will be drilled through. This way we know where to put our load locks. Now there you're just seeing us use a walking technique to push the wear band back to the wall. We got it tied up against the wall. And what we've done here is we kept it below the upper part of the wear band. This will allow the chem light to be forced back into its original factory groove. At this stage, we center punch the rivet and prep it for drilling. Now here he drilled through the outer skin, into the wear band, and through the wear band. As you see here, we drilled through the outer wall, into and through the inner wear band. Now what we're about to do is drill back through the wear band only with a 5 16 drill bit, and this will allow us to fit our, our T-nut into the hole. insert the quarter by 20 stainless steel screw through the hole. Attach the T-nut to the quarter by 20 stainless screw. and you'll use a snap ring pliers to secure the screw while the man on the outside tightens. Now at this point, we'll remove the pressure from the load locks and grind the excess threads off the bolt.
you can see the finished product. Now for this trailer, we chose four spots to use our T-nut fastener system. And it's evident how well it pulled it back. As you see here, these are the four rivets that we drilled out and inserted our stainless steel screws. They are in line with the factory rivets and they connect the outer panel, the post, to the wear band. Now once you get this process down, each screw hole should take no more than three minutes to complete. And that's drilling out the existing rivet, inserting the new stainless steel screw, and grinding off the excess. Now with the help of Donnie Branham, Casey Simons, and myself, we would like to thank you for watching this video. We hope and know this product will increase the life cycle of your trailers. If you want more information, you can visit us online at BranhamEquipment.com. That's B-R-A-N-H-A-M Equipment.com. Thank you.